Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks. Welcome back. You're watching the CNBC TV 18 Young Turks exclusive. We're in conversation with Naveen Tiwari on the InMobi turnaround story. Let me talk about yeah. your growth markets and uh, you pointed out that you've been investing in the US and China over the past two years and at this point in time I think what well, China contributes about 28 percent to revenues uh, what about the You're US right. and right. Uh, you know it Indonesia Australia and India so that's the, the, the five market strategy that you have in place uh, for the next few years we see ourselves going after these five markets because we, we see strategies here whereby we can actually cement ourselves to be one of the top players in these markets. Mm. I'll come to the US in a minute, but in China, Indonesia, India, and Australia, we clearly see ourselves being one of the top two or three players in that market for sure over the next couple of years. And that's why massive amount of investments going into those markets. And we have a strategy to say, hey, here's how we can be one of the winners in those markets. In the US, which is, lo which is a lot more complicated and, uh, and o overcrowded market, yeah. we think we have areas of niche where we can go in and own those pieces. So we are going very, very heavy on video advertising. We are going very heavy on remarketing. Mm -hmm based on commerce advertising and we think those are niche areas where we can actually own a very significant portion even in the US as a market and therefore we think even in that market extremely large we'll actually have a very strong foothold over the next couple of years. Uh, you know, just a quick point on China, and I don't mean to scoff at, uh, at uh, the success that you've enjoyed in China, Naveen, but would you say that that's largely on account of the fact that the big boys have been kept out of the Chinese market? Yeah, you're right. Look, there is no hiding the fact that Google and Facebook are not present there, but let's not also under undermine the, the presence of Tencent, Baidu, and Alibaba in that market. They're extremely, extremely strong in that market. Frankly, the reason why Google and Facebook are not in that market are because of those three companies. So therefore, while one can make the argument against Google and Facebook not being there, the reality is the presence of those three have actually held entrance of Google and Facebook in itself, whether you know, through direct or indirect means, but they have actually been able to do so. So we actually feel pretty privileged and excited of the fact that we are one of the top advertising platforms in China even today. And therefore, we think we can actually cement ourselves even more strongly in that market over the next couple of years. Uh, let me now pick up on some of the other issues that you talked about. And you talked about uh, giving up on the products uh, that didn't work out for you. Now, you had this big launch in San Francisco, uh, the, the MIP platform that you launched. And that hasn't really worked out as one of the key bets that you were hoping in the way that it would. Uh, there has been a change in strategy there. Do you continue to want to take that forward? What is the story there? Yeah, yeah, look, I think contrary to the, uh, the belief, uh, the, uh, the MIP platform has actually worked. I, I'll, I'll tell you the, the distinction. You know, when we launched this, we made, I think uh, we have to admit a mistake that we made, which is where we, we, we positioned the consumer-facing side of MIP a lot more than the underlying platform of MIP. The underlying platform of MIP today has already started contributing, I think, 10 to 15 percent of our revenues. The, the consumer facing side of it was anyways significantly future looking and we were merely trying to display that and that came to light a lot more than the underlying platform. So while that still remains, the platform is, uh, you know, we, we had to get rid of the name and therefore we market that as a remarketing platform right now and that's doing significantly well uh, globally. But that's not the, that's not the the product that we did give up on. We, we gave up on products that never even saw the light of the day, that never even came out, mm. because you know they were not going to essentially make sense for us. And we had teams of about five to 10 people that were actually working on it, and they all felt excited about those kind of products. We just didn't feel that we would be able to do justice to those things coming out and therefore we had to say no to it. You know, the other thing that you talked about, Naveen, was uh, that you don't want to rely on external funding. Now, the last round of funding was in 2011 and that's when you raised $200 million from SoftBank. You may not need the funding yeah. at this point in time, but are you looking at raising funds? Look, I would put this into two buckets, right? One is, uh, I actually think most of the technology startups should be able to become sustainable with the level of capital that we got. Now, going forward, looking for capital would basically be on our terms. Now, there are many things that one can do as an, as an organization where we don't need the capital, we may want it or we may get it, then we will take it, would be to essentially do acquisitions. Uh, if, if we start talking about how we look at the future, we think 
that there are a lot of changes that are happening in the in the advertising landscape and it's a great opportunity for us to essentially acquire a lot of companies. We haven't yet done so over the past two, three years, but we think that could be a great opportunity for so us. So will to do 2017 so. Now, be, be, a be a big year for, uh, for you on the acquisition front and where would you be looking at these acquisitions? Will these be geography specific or capability specific acquisitions that you would look at? Yeah, look, I think it's hard to say a lot of these are slightly more opportunistic in the way they are but what I could tell you is between 2017 and 2018, we would certainly look at uh, doing few acquisitions. We, uh, and they, they, by the way, span across both. They span across geography and they span across capabilities. I would argue that uh, they kind of have started to go, uh, you know, hand in hand a little bit. Uh, we'll see w what comes out, but that certainly is on the cards. Naveen, what is the situation as far as the cash on books is concerned? At the end of March uh, of 2015, it was at about 30 million. And also, uh, in terms of the debt position, uh, about 60 million, uh, you know, any concerns and worries on, on the debt front? No. no, no, we have enough cash to service our debt if we want to, any day we want. Uh, we just don't, there's no need to do it. <laughs> That's why that is there, so it helps you give the leverage that you want. Um, and so, yeah, that, look, cash on balance is not even a concern for us. Is this turnaround sustainable, Naveen? Have you been able to get rid of the non-core stuff that you wanted to get rid of, you know, restructure uh, enough to be able to make this turnaround sustainable? Because that's the question everyone's asking, given what we're seeing in the yeah. Indian uh, startup landscape at this point in time. Yeah, look, precisely for that reason, we never came out with this... Uh, uh, you know, earlier. We didn't want to talk about this earlier. We kept it under wraps for a long, long period of time. We wanted to be convinced ourselves. Uh, we saw great signs of it. We, we are convinced that it's sustainable. We are seeing signs of sustainability clearly. Uh, so we are happy with the way it is. Um, yeah, we should see this being sustainable for us for sure. So By the way, I think on the point on the Indian ecosystem, it's important that many, many companies look at becoming profitable because as an entrepreneur, two different entrepreneurs, I can tell you, it's an amazing feeling to be profitable um, and not be, uh, you know, uh, be reliant on others in, in trying to grow yourself. You know, I'm sure it's, be, it's been a lot of sleepless nights over the last two years, Naveen, for you, and I would imagine that that's the case across a lot of uh, startup boardrooms at this point in time in India. What is it? What is that one thing that you would like to, to share with, uh, with entrepreneurs who are going through exactly what you've been going through? People around you, as an entrepreneur, people around you will tell you how hard growth would be if you try and force yourself towards profitability, and that is a completely, um, it, it's, 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 you know, you give it a lot more value than it is uh, important for. Um, the growth does not get suffered as much if you do it rightly and smartly. Uh, you need to be extremely prudent about the way you do it. And so, therefore, that argument one should not take. Mm. I think it's, uh, it's an overused argument that growth will get hampered if you look for profitability. It's a completely o overused ar argument. Uh, so, the road to profitability has been achieved. Uh, uh, what about uh, the IPO plans, Naveen? Uh, we've spoken about this in the past as well. Uh, is the IPO on the horizon? Look, I, I don't know what horizon means, but if you ask me, we will look at probably years. something of that. Yeah, absolutely. Then, then it should be on the cards, probably. The advertising space is not well understood in, in the country today, um, in, in general. It's a very complex space, the advertising technology space. Now, in that space, by the way, if you look globally, there, are, there is Google, Facebook, the, the guys who are above a billion dollars. Yeah. And then there are players who are between 100 million to a billion dollars. And those are, you know, a handful of players, maybe five, less than five, of which global players are less than, you know, three, maybe mm. two. Now, that's the space that we are in. And the reason why ad tech in general is not considered to be a great space to be in is because less than 100 million dollars, there are 200 companies. Mm. And, and most of them may be less than 50 million dollars. This ad, ad tech is hard, uh, is very easy to start very hard to scale beyond a hundred million dollars. Mm. And we find ourselves not just at an India scale, obviously, but certainly at a global level, ourselves in that interesting, 
interesting band yeah. where we think we are at scale and differentiating from the others with very strong technology in place and therefore be able to cross the mark where the scale becomes paramount and therefore you see a lot of consolidation happening in the smaller companies and that's mm. the one that we want to take advantage of and grow and therefore as you grow we think we will be one of the top five advertising platforms in the world in the next two to Was three years. Was selling out really an option for you over the last two years? Did you seriously consider that Navid? Well it did start to cross the mind a couple of times because of the, uh, the, the you know things being tough and you are trying to figure out how to get out of those those scenarios so it does it does cross your mind and you know I was reflecting I was talking to uh, um, an international player um, and and he was you know obviously a renowned player and plays really well and he's saying look as players we also kind of go through these phases where mm -hmm. you know you're doing really really well and then suddenly you have a slight slump um, and you question yourself and I think every one of us goes through that phase and you come out of it and you are much stronger and you're fitter and you are, uh, you, you know, you, you kind of do it better because you know what didn't work right. And I think that's where we are right now. Well, Naveen Tabari here is wishing you and the team at InMobi the very best of luck. Uh, we hope that the lessons that you've learned over the past two years will ensure that the growth that you now see is going to be sustainable. Thanks very much for joining us on CNBC TV 18, Thank sharing you, your story with us uh, when you started InMobi in 2007 and today as you've turned profitable. It's always a pleasure. Thanks very much indeed. With that, from all of us here on the Young Tax team, goodbye and many thanks for watching. Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks.